What is up everybody? We are back to Wolf Tales and I just wanted to say please leave a like, comment, and or subscribe if you want to see more of this content or content like this. Uh, I left off on quite a big of a cliffhanger. I don't know if we're near the end of the uh, Mirari storyline, but we're going to find out together today and let's go ahead and load. Oh, I, oh, I hope the guy loaded. Yeah. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> okay, serious talk. I'm sorry, Mari, but my answer is no. I can't let you stay here. <gasps> I... I see. I apologize for asking such a selfish question. It was wrong of... Oh my god, I'm like, I'm like kind of tearing up because I'm so like emotionally like invested now <laughs> into this game. I, I didn't think I would be, guys, but um... Alright, let's go. It was wrong of me to attempt to force myself on you like this. With her lips quivering and her hand clenched tightly, Mari looks down at her feet as she fights back the tears. Try as she might to put on a brave face, her disappointment's clear. I'm sorry, Joe. I'm so, so sorry. I've been nothing but a burden to you this entire time. And now that it's time to go, I'm trying to take advantage of your kindness once more. I'm truly a detestable person. You're wrong. That's not, that, that's not, isn't it at all. I grabbed Mari's shoulder and firmly forced her to look me in my eyes. Mari, you haven't been a burden. In fact, it's been a pleasure to have you here. Any human would be lucky to take you in. It's just, I'm doing this for your own good. I know about your situation back home and why you want to leave, but that's exactly why I can't take you in. Murari, you can't stay here with me like this. You need to return to your pack before you, you lost him forever. But, but you said you're, you're, out, you're out here to be free, to get away from your family that expected so much of you. I know, and I'm sorry. In reality, our situation is not the same, Murari. You have actual lives counting on you. Well, I gave up on th when things got too difficult. I ran away b before I even tried to take over the company, and now I'll never know if it would have been too much for me or not. There were people counting on me that I let down. I'm not out here because of freedom. I'm out here because I ran away, and I don't want to make you. Uh, I don't want to make you make that same mistake. You're too kind, Joe. Even now, when I'm troubling you so, you're trying to spare my feelings. But you don't need to pretend anymore. If you, sim if you simply tell me that you dislike me, or you do not want me around you anymore, I will leave you without a fight. Ah, jeez. Fine, have it your way. If words won't get, get through to you, then maybe action as well. Joe, what are you... <laughs> <gasps> Before Mara can protest, I grab her shoulders and press my lips against her. Forcefully, yet not so hard to hurt her, I kiss Mari, causing her eyes to open wide in surprise. Despite her shock, Mari does not push me away. Mm, uh, Joe. I try to pull away from Mari, but the moment I do, she takes hold of my forearms. Her surprise had turned into lust, and she isn't prepared to let me go so quickly. Joe, does this mean... Yeah. I like you, Marari, more than anyone I've ever known in a long time. Before I met you, I thought I was destined to live the rest of my life out here in solitude, far away from everyone and everything. But being here with you, Marari, you remind me of the good that comes from being with other people. I wasn't trying to make you feel better than earlier, Mari. I really enjoyed your company, and I would be overjoyed if you, you'd have me here with. Uh, I would be overjoyed to have you here with me from now on. But that's also why I have to let you go. Mari's joyful smile turns into one of sadness and a heartbeat. No matter how many nice words I pile up, the end result is still that Mari must go. Why? I don't understand. If you care about me too, then why can't I stay here? Why can't we be together? Why? I don't answer. 
Instead, I lowered my head next to Marari's and kissed her on the cheek as she quietly sobs. Why do things have to be this way? All I want is to stay here with you, just as I've been till now. Why won't you let me? Once again, I kiss Marai's cheek and avoid making eye contact. Even without looking at her, I can tell that she's crying. Every convulsion of her body is transmitted, transmitted to me clearly. I wish I was born human. Then I would be free to choose my own life without worrying about the pack or about doing what's best for everyone. But more than that, if I were human, then maybe I could have been together with you after all. No. Did I did I get like a bad ending? Oh man. A few days passed by after a, my tearful night time decision discussion. Right. Given time to process what was said, both girls gradually turned to their usual selves, and we go back to how we were before our trip to the hot spring. Aside from the occasional sidelong glance, we returned to our previous dynamic without incident. Come on, Hime. What's taking so long? Just pick a movie and put it in. I I need another minute. I narrowed down my choice to two tapes, but I'm having a hard time deciding on one. So watch the one tonight and one tomorrow. It's not a big deal. Yeah, but... Uh, Joe, can we watch both of these tonight? No, you pick one. Fuyu picks one. That's what we agreed on. Oh, no fair. Mari sulks as she goes back and deciding what movie she wants to watch tonight. Jeez, Mari is acting more and more human by the day. I was right to worry about the negative impact having the girls stay here. They seem to be getting a bit too used to human culture. At the rate they're going, they're not, they really won't be going to reintegrate integrate back into their pack. I leave the girls alone and walk into the kitchen. I then turn on the radio to listen for any changes in the letter there and any plans to have the path Cleared. I enjoy having the two here, but we really do need to get them home sooner than rather than later. The longer they stay, the more difficult it's going to be on all of us when they inve inevitably leave. After listening to the radio for a short while, I turn it back off. With a smile on my lips, I return to the living room. <sighs> oh well, no, no use worrying about it until, while the paths are still blocked. Once a clear route back to the girl's den has surfaced, then we'll talk. Joe, Joe, I reached a decision. You have? About returning home? Uh-huh. Tonight, we'll watch the rest of the Glasslands documentary. Then tomorrow, we'll watch the movie about the Man of Iron. I wonder if that's Iron Man. <laughs> oh, you were talking about what we'll be watching. Alright, sounds good to me. Though, I didn't pick you for a fan of superheroes. Superheroes? Yeah, that's the second movie you picked. It's about a person with a suit of high-tech armor who goes around fighting and bad guys. Oh, is that what it's about? I thought it was about an educational film about blacksmiths. Why would I even have something like that? Mm, in that case, I'll pick something else. I'm not fond of violence. Alright, you, you, you go do... Crunch. <laughs> that... I look down on my feet and I hear a crunching sound from below. When I reach my foot... A number, a numerous crumbs of food on the rug. Mari, I thought I, you already cleaned the living room already. Hmm? Oh yes, food scraps on the floor. My apologies, I haven't yet started to sweep those up. Sweep them up? Yes, I'll, well, shortly after, right after I pick another movie. No, 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 you don't need to sweep things up with a rug. It'll be too difficult. Haven't you heard of a vacuum cleaner? Uh oh, <laughs> the girls are definitely gonna react to that. Vacuum cleaner? <sighs> Never mind. It'll be quicker just to show you how it works. I head into the storeroom and find a vacuum cleaner tucked away in the back corner. After making sure it's fully charged, I bring it back to the living room and turn it on and. <sighs> oh, yep, I know it. <coughs> Joe, be careful! That thing is. Mario walks backwards in the kitchen looking for a weapon to defend herself with. No, no, Mari, settle down. This machine is... Another one? And this one managed to get in the cabin. Quick, Hime, get by me. I'll take it out. Will you? Please, be careful. It already has Joe cornered. 
If it feels threatened, it might attack him. Not on my watch. Girls, come on, not this again. I know the noise unsettles you, but it's just a machine. It won't hurt you. That's what he said about the last one. Now swallow the huge hole. I'm not taking any chance with this one. Good grief. Um. Hmm. Pretend to fight the vacuum cleaner or start cleaning. Um. I should probably humor the girls and pretend to fight the vacuum cleaner. I feel a little bad about deceiving the girls, but. Whoa! Joe? Watch out! It's going for out of control! Yeah! Hime! Girl, you think? Get away from her! God, it's a tough one. Fuyu, don't get any closer. The sight of women excites it. Wah! Fuyu turns a bright red face. Contemptible beast, get away from me. Don't worry, I got this under control. Just a little bit more. Got it. Having cleaned the floor around where we usually eat, I turn the vacuum cleaner off. The moment I do, the noise stops, and both girls begin to relax. Is it dead? Careful, Hime. It might be a loneliness into a false sense of security. Allow me to investigate. Okay, be careful. Easy does it. Easy. Now! Hey, what do you... Stop that! Jump! <laughs> the moment Fuyu enters a striking range, she launches that back and plan and sinks her teeth into it. Fuyu, stop that. You don't need to attack it. It's already dead, okay? Are you sure, Joe? Yes, I'm sure. So stop banging it, Fuyu. It feels this. It didn't taste any good anyway. Of course it didn't. It's plastic. Patting herself on the back while enjoying praise from the forbidden princess, Fuyu leads Mariah into the next room. Meanwhile, I assess the damage to the vacuum cleaner while it thankfully isn't as bad as it seems. For crying out loud, how many times do I have to tell you those girls? Maybe I should send them <laughs> to the hot spring or something next time I want to use the vacuum or the truck. I mean, in a way, I guess it's good they aren't completely used to life here. If they're going to rejoin the pack, then it's for the best that they don't get too comfortable here. But really, of all things, I wish they would learn while they stay here. Not attacking appliances is a pretty big one. Grumbling to myself, I take the vacuum cleaner back to the storeroom and put it where I found it. Still, maybe it wouldn't be so bad if the girls got used to life here. I mean, I do want what's best for them, but I'm certain what's best is for them is to return to the pack. Even so, if hypothetically they couldn't return to the pack, then it's not like it would be the end of the world. Conflicted, I return to the living room. Oh well. I guess it's a needless concern, as long as the pack is still blocked. Right now, we're all stuck here together, whether we like it or not. <laughs> Hime! Hime, are you out here? I followed you since this cabin. Hime! If you're here, answer me! A visitor? For me? In that voice? Oh shit, it's another person? Hime, it's someone from our back! They found a way through the snow! Ah oh, yes, that must be it. Quickly! Let us see her at once. Hmm. With a solemn look on her face, Mari walks over to the door. She unlocks the door and begins to open it, at which point her facial expression quickly changes. Ugh. Wolf girl, huh? Hime! Oh my goodness! What happened to you? Was the trek over here so really truly de treacherous? Ugh. When a girl opens the door, what awaits them is another wolf girl. Unlike Mari and Fuyu, however, the girl before him appears heavily injured. <gasps> oh, <coughs> the wolf was the path is clear. There's no problem there. Before the path was cleared, however, the injured girl looks at Mari in the eye as she speaks. Hime, your mother. My mother? What about my mother? Is she okay? Hime, the avalanche, which occurred during the year absence, injured many of us, myself included. For every for, for every one of us injured by the avalanche, however, two more were killed. Among those killed by the avalanche was your mother. The queen? She is dead? Oh no. No. No, no. My deepest apologies, Hime, but there's no time for you to grieve. After your mother's passing, you were presumed dead as well. In light of that, a challenge was made for the throne. The Game of Thrones. A challenge? Who would dare? 
one of the surviving hunters. He took advantage of the confusion and the loss of life declared him the new alpha male. If you don't hurry back, Hime, he, he truly will become the new pack leader and take from you what is rightfully yours. The intro wolf girl, uh, barely, oh. The injured wolf girl barely remained standing, supported solely by desperation and anger. Hime, did you hear that? You must leave at once! Mother, this is no time for mourning. If you wish to honor your mother's memory, then claim the throne that she left for you. But, but I don't even want the throne. Those words which Mari can't not say in front of the injured kin are transmitted to me directly, as clear as day. What weighs on her mind is not the leadership of the pack, but the death of her mother, beloved mother. Unfortunately for the other two wolf girls present, uh, <clears throat> unfortunately the other two wolf girls present are not about to give to her time to grieve. Princess, please, you must return and take the throne. Too many of us have already been killed or injured. What we need now more than other, uh, and more than ever, is stability over the royal family's leadership. I agree, Hime. If we do not return now, who knows what fate will befall our pack. Take the role left to you by your parents, Pime. Become their new leader! I understand what you're asking me. I really do, but... Avoiding gazes of the two insistent wolf girls, Mari looks for me for help. Staring at me pleadingly, she appears to be in the brink of tears as she seeks my advice. Unfortunately for Mari, I agree with her clansmen. You need to go, Mari. Joe? This is your fight, Marari. It's for the future of your pack, which both your parents died to protect. If you don't go, you're going to regret it for the rest of your life. But I... I stand directly in front of Marari and smile as I look down at her. It's okay. I'll look after your friend here. When you're done sorting out your pack business, I'll be, I'll be right here waiting to hear the good news. So leave. Return to your pack. And then... When this all is all over, if you still want to come back and see me, I welcome you with open arms. Mari looks at me with her eyes filled with hope, and I give her one final chance to escape. Sort out your pack business and then make your decision. That's my advice to her. Very well. I will go and fulfill my obligation. Oh my god. I, I don't know what to say. Uh, let Mari go? Tell the girls to wait. I'm gonna save. I gotta save. This is this is crazy. This is crazy sauce right now. Okay, I'll save. That way, if we need to return, like I mess up. I, tell the the girls to wait. Huh? Should I? I, I let Mara go. Let us make haste for you. Yes, Princess, at once. Joe, um, before you go, if you would, I'll take care of your friend. Hurry back, safe and sound, okay? Yes, I mean your debt, human. Trying her best to remain serious as the situation dictates, Fu leaves with a smile on her face as she hurries after Murray. Sparing only fleeting gallants as they depart, the two girls soon disappear from my sight, closing the cabin door behind them as they venture out into the snow. Whew. Mari finally worked up the courage to, to, uh, to face her pack, huh? I guess she really wasn't left with much of a choice. You say that with a smile on your face, but your tone does not match your words. You were hoping they would stay here instead, human? Reminded of my new guest's presence, I, first, I grabbed a first aid kit on the shelf and set it down on the living room table. Then I motioned the wolf girl to sit down on the couch, which she does so vigilantly. I don't know if I'd go that far. I mean, I enjoyed having the two of them around, and it's been more than lively with living with those two, and I have fun. But that as it, it may, I have no intention of stopping them from returning to the pack. In the short time we spent together, it isn't something over which I'd be expect either of them to throw away their pack. But, huh? That's a surprising rational conclusion for a human. Ouch! Sorry, did that hurt? No, it's fine. These bindings of cloth will aid recovery process, will they not? Yes, they will. They're called bandages. Are you familiar with human medicine? I have used it before, as a hunter. 
I, I am adept at situations demand. When the only medicine on hand is that of humans, I will use it. I see. Come to think of it, you're accepting my aid without much of a fight. Shouldn't you be a bit more wary of me? I kind of expect you to act more like Fuyu when she first came here. There's no need for me to be wary. As she says that, the wolf girl brings a single claw to my throat. If you show any signs of hostility, I'll kill you without a moment's hesitation. <laughs> so that's it. I stand corrected. This girl is far more wary of me than Fuyu was. Even if that was not the case, I see no reason not to trust you. Oh, is that so? It is. After all, you even take care of the Hime and Fuyu all this time. What's more, both the girls seem quite fond of you. Not just the kind of hearted princess, but the hard headed human hating Fuyu. If you bore will, ill will of us, you will not be able to gain their trust in such a degree. So that's it. It's been, it's been difficult times living with those two, but I like to think that we all get along. Yes, get along, you say. That reminds me of the final reason why I believe I can trust you with my care. There's more? You've given quite a lot of thought. You should be thankful that I have. I usually kill human uh, beings in sight. Well, so, the other reason is... The overpowering aroma. I'm confused at the wolf girl's remark. I sniffed my uh, underarms. Not you, fool. I'm talking about Fuyu and the princess. I don't know which one of you, one of you laid your hands on the... But... Perhaps it was even both. All I know is that the moment I walked in here, I've been assaulted by the smell of one or both of those ghost pheromones. <laughs> pheromones? You don't mean... No, that's impossible. She was just in heat, that's all. My nose doesn't lie, human. Whoever, whichever one of those girls who accepted you as their mate, it is for the sake of their litter that I spared, <laughs> spared you. Litter? Oh, come on now. We haven't gone that far, you know. For everything that's happened since those girls came here, I assure you, most certainly, I have not impregnated them. I sigh and shake my head as I finish applying bandages and disinfect disinfectant to the intravocal's wounds. Alright, that'll go do it. Stay seated or lay down, it's your choice. But just make sure you take it easy. You're welcome to stay here until you recover, as long as you don't start attacking my appliances. I do not fully understand what you mean. But I shall accept your kindness, nonetheless. You have my thanks once more, human. Leaving the injured wolf's girls aside for a moment, I return to the kitchen and take a breather. It hasn't really sunk in yet, but for the reality of the situation is, Mari and Fuyu are gone. Be it temporary or permanent, my wolf girl house guests are finally left. <sighs> what a joke. I spent all that time worrying about whether to let him stay or not, then in a matter of seconds they both disappeared. I feel like an idiot for thinking about this so much. I lean, I lean against the counter in the kitchen as the girls' faces come to mind. They vanish as quickly as they appeared, and now they're gone. I have no way of knowing if they'll ever come back. Will Mari become the new pack leader after all? Will Fuyu succeed in trying to keep her mischievous princess under control? Or will the coup succeed, er, succeed leaving Mari without, responsibi without the responsibilities she's been desperately trying to avoid all this time? As the spectator of not knowing uh, begins to loom under over me, bleh, I return my gaze to the injured wolf girl next to the room. Although she is now bandaged up and looking much better than when she showed up, the girl is clearly not well. At, at that moment, I recall Fuyu's warning from the past, as well as the injured wolf girl's story. No, I shouldn't jump to conclusions. Those girls know their pack uh, far better than I do. If they left even knowing what awaited them, then it can't be as bad as what I'm imagining. Besides, even if the worst case scenario, it's not like Mirai would fight the alpha male one-on-one. -on -one. For you and the rest of the pack would back her up, I'm sure of it. Those girls are going to be just fine. I, I'm sure they'll be back here paying me a visit before I know it. <gasps> Hours quickly turn into days as I wait for word of Mirai and Fuyu's safety. <gasps> Left behind, I spend my days living with the injured friend, facing constant reminders that I don't share the same relationship as I did with Mariah or Fuyu. Before I realize a week has passed, and the injured girl is well enough to return to her pack. Just like that, I am once again left on my own, kept company by a silence I once craved. <gasps> no! Did I get it? Did I get a bad end? 
As time continues to pass, I'm left guessing to the fate of my form guest. Ryan Fuyu did not show their face before me again, nor does the injured wolf girl. Whether dead or alive, I have no way of knowing what happened to them. Perhaps they perished at the hands of a new alpha male. Perhaps Mari took the throne, leaving herself and Fuyu no time to pay me a visit. Whatever the case, I will never know the truth. Those two girls are gone, and in all likelihood, I'll never see them again. <gasps> no! No! I got a bad end! No! That's so sad. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. I'll load back that last save where maybe I have to tell the girls to wait or something. And we'll see what happens next time. Please leave a like, comment, and or subscribe if you want to see that next episode. And I'll see you guys there. Bye.